All right, so now that we have dealt with Ohm's law, let's see what comes next. Now we get to actually construct what the electromotive force is and how it all works together. The reason why we had to cover Ohm's law first is because um, potential difference between the terminals for any, for any setup that we have gives us that the potential is equal to the electromotive force. Okay, and the electromotive force is defined as the closed integral of the force over the line segment, okay? So it's, it's asking us what is the force that is pushing these things through. The current has to be pushed through somehow. And so we have a bunch of unitized uh, force vectors that add up and force densities that keep the charges from piling up, okay? So what we're asking now is how can we relate the EMF with the potential and deal with everything else that we were looking for as far as current and charge and all that stuff. So this one's a pretty quick example of or problem of what to do with these things and let's go ahead and hack at it. So the statement reads a battery of EMF uh, which is a little E curly E whatever you want to call it. The internal in resistance R is hooked up to a variable load resistance R. If you want to deliver the maximum possible power to the load, what resistance R should you choose? You can't change E and R, of course. Okay, so if that's the case. If we're looking for the max power, we can take the div derivative of P with respect to big R and find out what the critical point is. Just a little calculus example. So if we use Ohm's law, I is equal to V over R total, since we have an internal resistance and a variable resistance. But again, that's uh, V goes to the electromotive force because that's what's going to push it. And then P is equal to I squared over R. And so to simplify that through, and now let's take the derivative with respect to R. You got a, a gross little quotient rule here, so or product rule if you're really clever. Either way, simplify it nicely. You see that by setting it equal to zero, we're only concerned where the um, fractions are equal to one another. So by cross multiplying, we get some cancellations. And these cancellations yield to little r plus big R equal to 2R. Therefore, if we want the max possible load, big R has to equal little r.